Right then, hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, welcome. My name is Paul, I'm also called Knickknack, I'm the brains, God help me, behind Knickknack's Daily Teaser, and I'm somebody who talks about TV shows I've seen, and occasionally about the odd movie I've watched. It's Sunday the 15th of August 2021, it's just coming up for 10 o'clock at night as I record this, and last night I watched the latest Marvel Universe release, that is Black Widow. I wanted to possibly do a review, possibly tell you about it, or possibly just gob off about what I saw last night. Let me make one small minor point here. Um, there's an old, oh well, novel, 1984 that uses a form of English called Newspeak, and it introduces the word ungood as the opposite to good. It sort of means, kind of means bad, but it's a little more precise. That's a word that was floating through my head. I also do a five-star rating system for movies that goes zero, right at the bottom, all the way to four at the top. Zero, one, two, three, four. I'll leave you to watch the end, to the end of this video to find out what I've given black Widow. Black Widow opens in Ohio in 1985, showing us a young Natasha Romanoff, the Black Widow, played in this case at this stage of the event by Eva Anderson, cycling home to what we assume is a small town family home somewhere in Ohio. Her family are actually a, sleep, a Russian sleeper cell composed of the father, Alexei, Red Guardian, uh, played by David Harbour, the mother, Melina, another Black Widow, played by Rachel Weiss, and a younger sister, young Yelena, played by Violet McGraw, in this opening scene. Unfortunately, the cell finds out they have to flee to Cuba with the help of General Drakov, played by Ray Winston, after Alexei's theft of sensitive information from, and talking of, a nearby S.H.I.E.L.D. base. We slide into the opening credits and, post titles, we find that the older Natasha, Black Widows, played by Scarlett Johansson this time, on the run in the wake of, um, from what I can see, Captain American Civil War. Whilst in another unnamed part of the world, Yelena, this time the older version of the character played by Florence Pugh, is fighting against a group of Black Cat agents and ultimately fleeing with several vials of a volatile red l liquid that can neutralize the mind control techniques used by Russia's Red Room program, its Black Widow training program. It's a program that she and her sister have been part of. Yelena has had bad memories of the, the actual program itself and quite decidedly wants it to stop. The only way she can do that, conscript her adopted sister Natasha, then find their adoptive father Alexei, who's the only person who knows where their adoptive mother is, then find out from Melina where the Red Room is and confront its controller, a certain General Drakov. Now, what did I make of this little lot? What did I make of Black Widow? To be brutally honest, not a lot. Let me start by telling you that I'm not a big fan of superhero genre movies. I'm not a big fan, at least, of the Marvel ones. The, the DC ones seem preferable from what I've seen. Um, but with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it struck me that there's quite possibly way too many of them, for starters, to keep track of. The only ones I had seen were the Blade films back in the day, which were released at a time when there wasn't that many Marvel movies, so there wasn't that much sort of external connection that they needed to throw in. Um, Deadpool was another one I'd seen, which is hysterically funny, and it's written so that newcomers to a Marvel film didn't need to have seen any others. It's brilliantly young as was Black Panther. Again, a very entertaining watch. Very empowering, I suspect, for Black Britons 
and black Americans watching it, and also written again as a standalone movie with as little connection to other movies in the Marvel franchise as possible. They were, for a non-Marvel fan like me, they were easy watches. I didn't need too much extra knowledge of the rest of the saga. I went into Black Widow last night thinking it would be the same. A, a, a relatively easy to follow standalone film that was easily digestible by both fans and non-fans. <sighs> From what I've seen, for a non-fan like me, it's not the case. It's not necessarily easy to follow in part because I think the writers, the screenplay, screenplay was by a guy called Eric Pearson, the actual story by Jack Schaefer and Ned Benson, seem to assume a lot more knowledge of the background than many may have, certainly more than I did. I didn't realise, for example, that there was, uh, or I didn't know for sure that there was more than one Black Widow than the Johansson character, to give you an example. Another issue for me, um, towards the end of the movie, Melina is at the control plan panels of the, uh, the airborne red room. It's a strategic part of it that controls, that can land the thing. The Red Room in this film, if you've seen Doctor Who, some of the David Tennant years of Doctor Who, is a huge, great airborne base like the Valiants in Doctor Who. Now, at this point in the movie, Melina gets locked in by sliding bulkheads, and as far as I could see, has absolutely no way of escaping. Yet we see her helping Natasha, Yelena and Alexei a few minutes later, without being, from what I could see, shown how she escapes. That seems fairly typical of the film. There seems to be choppy bits of plotting that aren't tied off properly. Um, another aspect for me, Ray Winstone as the villain as Drake of, he seemed slightly miscast. He's a very capable, competent actor capable of being very, 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 very menacing. I saw him in 44-inch chest a few years ago, and he's a nasty piece of work in that. That, he seemed very, very miscast, and possibly not necessarily too stunning with a Russian accent. I'm sure he got a good dialect code scene for the part, so it's an okay accent, except of course having seen him in so many things before, I kept mentally hearing his underlying London accent. <coughs> he wasn't bad in the role, he was okay in the role, he just wasn't necessarily at his best in the role. So to be coming out of all of that lot, and to be totally honest with you, I think that this is a list I could possibly add to were I to watch Black Widow again. As of right now, and I have to say this, Black Widow, it's cast a good, generally okay, generally competent. The fight scenes are very well choreographed. The action scenes, the car chases, the gunfights are all nicely done. But, from where I'm sitting, Black Widow is an okay film to have seen. An okay film to have seen. It is just not necessarily the best film I could have seen. I'll leave you with a thought that I've given it four, one stars out of a potential four. And I'll leave you to leave a few comments under this video. Let me know what you think of the film. And I'll catch you later. Let's <laughs> go.